This is my white weatherboard home in rural Sussex, England. Hi, I'm Tracy and welcome to the upstairs tour of my home. My last video was the downstairs tour and today I'm going to show you around upstairs. Enjoy. The first thing you notice when you come upstairs, well, let's face it, you can't miss it, can you, is this huge beam chandelier. It's an original timber to the house that was revealed when we were opening up all the very small rooms in order to create this central staircase with the gallery landing. I knew I had to use it somewhere in the house, so I had it shot blasted, which brought out all the beautiful tones in the wood. And then my electrician and I had a great afternoon hanging it on rusting chain that I'd had rusting for about two years because I knew I wanted to do something with it. So we had an afternoon of up a bit, down a bit with the lights to create it. I've kept the decoration very simple here to make the most of the light and the space. Using white emulsion on the walls, white skirting boards, the same engineered oak flooring that I have running throughout the whole of the house, and also the revamped auction finds. I'm a lifelong lover of recycling, reusing, revamping. In fact, I've been upcycling before upcycling was even a word. Here's another little auction find. I've actually wrapped this metal chair in coir, and I do have a video on this technique. My furniture goes through many reincarnations. I'm forever stripping it and changing the colour. And the last time I changed this corner unit here, I finished it in Annie Sloan Old White and White Wax. And Annie herself actually got in touch with me on Instagram in order to share the process. And I will definitely be doing some YouTube videos to show you how I do it as well. To keep the light levels high in this area, I've put in two dormer windows and opposite those, rather than a single bedroom door, I've put in sliding double doors. When they're open, the light just trips from room to room. So let's get into the bedrooms. First one is the master suite. So to give you an idea of sizing, it's around 600 square feet. The ceilings are vaulted up to 15 feet high. In a part of the vaulted space, I hung some steel so I could create a dressing room with a spiral staircase going up to it. Although originally I was going to put the bathroom up there. That could have been a bit dodgy at three o'clock in the morning. The chandelier here has been hung from rusting chain. Yes, I had a lot of it. And then I dressed it with some more crystals, vintage crystals that I found on old chandeliers. The giant headboard is made from recycled timber. It's timber that I found on the flat roof when we were vaulting it where the office is downstairs. The underside of the boards were completely clean and hadn't seen the light of day for 70 years. So like the beam chandelier, I brought them out of the dark and put them into the light to be admired. I've had comments on social media in the past saying, oh, it's far too big. But I always think if you're going to have one, have a big one. Don't be shy, girls. This chaise was a £50 auction find that I just distressed the paintwork and gave the fabric a good clean. I love to make my beds in a very relaxed style, particularly in the winter months, making them feel cosy and inviting. I'm in the process of reducing the amount of grey in the house. I've gone through my grey phase. So this is one that I altered recently. This is just with Annie Sloan Old White and then with the dark wax. And it's a technique I'll share with you in the future. This is another technique I'd love to share with you as well. This mirror is actually black plastic. It was about £10, but it's a really good size. So I have aged it somewhat. I've grouped together mercury glass that I've collected over the years. I have another weakness for glass as well, and that's mirrored. And the more mottled, the better. This is an auction find, again, that I've revamped with chalk paint and hung from a chain. I've recoloured this chair with chalk paint and wax. Now, I do have a project coming up that shows how to do that. I've had several requests on how I create stone effect, so I will put together a video on that for you as well. Please do feel free to pop something in the comments if there's anything that you see that you'd like me to explain further or show you how I do things. This chest of drawers here, my husband actually had, he owned it when I met him. 
and that was over 30 years ago. So it stood the test of time and it's had many different colours on it. This is the latest incarnation. The old pine plantation shutters were an eBay find. They were in a row of six, so I simply split them and did a paint effect. And the ladder was an antique fair find for just £10. Perfect for the throws. I found two long benches at auction that were covered in gloss paint. So I just stripped them back and popped them in front of the radiator's kitchen and bedroom. Now, here we go into the bathroom, my wonderful vintage tub. This is made of zinc. It was found on eBay, covered in paint, and I completely stripped it. It took me weeks. It was a complete labour of love. I adore it. In the summer months, the shutters are pulled to one side, the French doors open, there's a Juliet balcony, and I can sit in the tub and look out across my land, watching the deer go past. And the bracken here is from that field. This was actually done for a magazine shoot. I styled it with the bracken. Loved it so much, I left it in situ. And you may have spied another chandelier, and yes, that is hung from rusting chain as well. The sink unit is an old dresser that I've taken the legs down on to get it to the right height. Two sinks in there and I've also put in two showers in this area. Again in the summer months when the shutters are pulled back and the French doors are open, you have the most amazing views when showering. Definitely one of the perks of not being overlooked. As this was such a big build, I was able to set up trade accounts with lots of suppliers and negotiate really good discounts on things. So I would definitely recommend you doing that if you are doing a substantial build. And even if you're not, do shop around because quality and prices vary substantially. There are always bargains to be had. Just put the legwork in. So we'll leave the bathroom there and we will go up to the dressing room. Now the staircase came from eBay and I got my steel fabricator to put some additional bits on to make sure it complied with current day building regs. The dressing room has been made really simply using scaffold boards, tubes and clamps. I have one long rail at the top and then if you part the clothes you'll find it's repeated below full length second rail with a shelf. And then on the other side, there is lots of shelving, but it's so untidy I can't show you. But I can show you the view from my dressing room. Let's leave the master and go on to bedroom number two. This is the room with the double doors that pull wide open and the light, as you can see from the twin windows, comes flooding through. It's south facing. Hubby uses this room as his dressing room. This is a six drawer unit I've just done for him for all his socks. Well, I say all, that's full of socks too. He has a thing about socks. I designed these wardrobes for him as well for all his different things. I used scraps of material left over from the build and doors that I found on eBay. I had to be quite creative too because there's actually a chimney breast in there. Now into bathroom number two. I created some shelving from an ash tree that unfortunately had dieback that I had to take down. So I kept lots of rounds and I've used them in a couple of places for shelving. The wall lights were found here, so I just recolored them. And the little dresser I've had for years, again, paint job turned into a sink unit. Now this room does not have a window, so it has no natural light. So I popped in a sun tunnel. It's the first time I've used one and the light is fantastic. So I would definitely recommend sun tunnels. Let's go and have a look at bedroom number three. Now that super sexy curve you can see over there is actually a very old chimney. We are now on the very oldest side of the house. This is the area where the staircase used to come up and there was a landing. So I pushed that wall back a few feet so I could create a bedroom in this space. The old beams were not in a very good condition at all and because I wanted a very light airy finish they were all coloured up. 
again I've gone for white walls in here I've not put anything on the walls I want to keep this space calm and peaceful I've used washed linen on the bed uh, which I absolutely love and aside from anything else it's great because you never need to iron it anything that saves me time on the domestic front is an absolute win for me we have this unusual quirky little vault here and yes you've guessed it there's another chandelier and rusting chain never want to miss an opportunity there's also some more wonderful twisted old beams and you can see where there's probably been joists in there at some time so interesting so through to the bathroom for bedroom number three the mirror you see ahead of you there is actually a door so I made that from scaffold boards and glass and another dresser has been altered to become a sink unit as the bedroom here has very low ceilings it wasn't going to really work putting a wardrobe in personally I don't really go for wardrobes I find they take up too much space and take the light out of a room so what I did here was divide the room slightly with a stud wall, creating a walk-in closet with tube and clamps for hanging and then tube and clamps and scaffold boards for shelving and some of the leftover ash for these cute corner shelves. Now into bedroom number four. Several of the bedrooms have old pine beds in them that I've picked up over the years. Generally off eBay, normally around about £20, good solid old pine beds, but they're orange, so people don't want them. I do paint effects on them, and by the time I've put a new mattress on, thrown some lovely bedding on, who would know the difference? And it saves you a fortune, because they can be so expensive to buy bed frames. Again, I've kept the furnishings very simple in this room and I've created a doorway into a dressing area and a bathroom by using a slab of oak hung from a barn door mechanism. It's becoming quite a signature thing that I do. A simple tube and clamp railing and some shelving is all that's really needed in this space as this is very much a guest bedroom. The shower area in here is the very first shower area that I tiled. Uh, I worked with my plumber who was a brilliant tiler. He kept it very quiet because he had enough to do with the plumbing. And towards the end of the job, when we came to this area, he helped me and showed me how to tile. And I absolutely fell in love with doing it. I'm always open to learning new skills. So let's leave bedroom number four and we'll go and see the last bedroom, number five. Now by now you've probably got a firm grasp of what my taste is like and you may be wondering why I've got red leather chairs in this room. We actually had these made to order many, many years ago when we had a red study and they were expensive then and now they're, they're so expensive to have made. I obviously can't paint them, shock horror. Um, and I don't really want to sell them. So I'm going to hold on to them in case I turn to the red side again. So here they live in this guest bedroom, which is on the very old side of the house. So again, you have these fabulous old beams showing through, which date back to the 1700s. And you can see here, I've added some red vintage books in order to try and pull the scheme together. It's kind of whites and greys and reds. Do you think I've got away with it? What do you think, Bertie? Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that. If you missed the downstairs tour, please go check out that video. And if you're enjoying what I do, then why not subscribe? I've got lots more videos coming up, lots of creative content. So I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye.